winter wonderland. Dr. Michelle Oakley is making her list. All right. And checking it twice. She looks great. Woo! Look at her little buck. She's going to find out who's feeling all right. There you go. All right, reindeer. As she cares for Alaska's reindeer. Whether they're naughty. Good boy. No, that's not a good boy. Or nice. Reindeer kisses. Are you hungry? Come on. There she is. There's a good girl. Come on. Come I'm on. Lauren at the Williams Reindeer Farm in Palmer, Alaska. Today, um, Dr. Oakley's coming out to help check on some baby reindeer for us. Hey. Hi. How's it going? Good, good. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. This is an exciting time at the reindeer farm because we have lots of baby reindeer being born. We've had 25 born so far and we're expecting 40 babies. Hi, kids. This is going to be awesome. I mean, I'm getting to do basically Santa's job. I'm like, you know, scooping out what's the new talent coming up this year, the new crop of baby reindeer. It's very fun to look at the babies, make sure they're healthy, of course, but um, just to see them running around with their moms, it's, it's pretty entertaining. But there's so many of them out here. It's so blonde, she's like two-tone. Yeah. What do you call that when you like do your hair with a lighter at the end? The ombre. Ombre, yeah. That's what she is. <laughs> and I got a good look at everybody. OK, cool. Okay. No babies born last night, but a special treat was discovered during yesterday's check. Lauren has one that was just born a little less than 24 hours ago. Hi. Hi, Mama. So that one's definitely going to need an ear tag. We're going to weigh it. Oh, look at that fuzzy ear. So cute. Good boy, I know. Sorry. We want to see how much you weigh. What are our bets here? A weigh-in will confirm if this little guy is growing as he should. Oh, I, I think, think 12. Than, really? I think 13. I'm going 13. Okay. Five. okay. We're gonna pick him up. There. 15 pounds, whoa, 12 ounces. Oh, oh! Oh, my. As we lift him, the sling just breaks. So, I mean, he's in great shape. There's nothing wrong with this calf, and he's one of the bigger ones. That's a big boy. That's a very That's big boy. That's the biggest boy I think we've had this year. You did great. OK, did you want to try and milk this mama? Yeah. Too? Along with a newborn calf comes the mother's nutrient-packed first milk called colostrum. So the mom just had this new baby um, about 20 hours ago. So she should still be making some colostrum, possibly. It kind of depends on how much he's nursed. So he probably got some of it, but we were going to take a little bit of extra in case there's another baby that's born that the mom doesn't look after. Then we can give it the colostrum from her. I mean, that colostrum is kind of like liquid gold because it has all the antibodies in it. It has all the kind of really important things to help that baby fight any infection. There we go. Look at that. You got it? Yeah, now it's flowing. Do now you think it's colostrum or is it more milk? It's, it's definitely looking milkier. You know how the yeah. colostrum's really pale? Uh-huh. So it turns out what, what we milked out of this mama is, is not colostrum. Um, she must have been just past the mark because it, it wasn't the right color. It's a little bit whiter and just more like regular milk. So that means it's up for grabs. That is good. Yeah? It's, it's like creamy. You're like, yeah. <laughs> it's super creamy. Yeah, I mean, it tastes really good. Almost like unsweetened, like, or not very sweet whipped cream. There is an aftertaste. There's definitely like, like a Christmassy aftertaste. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> You're cute. Yes, you are. Getting in shape for Christmas Eve is a year-round job. And despite the summer rain, love is in the air for reindeer across Alaska. So today I'm headed to the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center with Sierra and Maya. It's nearly breeding season in the reindeer herd, and we've got a couple members that we need to check out. Let's go. Yep, yep. All right, let's go. Today, Dr. Oakley is hopefully going to be able to castrate Zeus. He was born here at the Wildlife Center. He's in the herd with his mom. We do allow breeding, but we don't allow inbreeding. So Zeus needs to be castrated. Where is he? Which one is he? We think he's this little guy. He's licking his rump right now. Oh, at the very back there. OK. So can we walk in we there? We can walk kinda... in. And... Yeah, OK, let's do that. Hi, Chuckles. Oh, Grandpa. Oh, my goodness. The reindeer are really funny. 
They're quirky, they're all individuals. Oh my goodness, look at this one. Hi, hello. Some are really all up in your biz, like Chuckles, with his massive rack. Every year it looks crazier and crazier. Some are a little bit more skittish. <laughs> Caesar, heck no, we won't go. Because last time I darted him. Luna, go pretty miss thing. She just wants to be with you, you know? They're inquisitive, so they think people mean something good, like food and fun. He's the one we're going for. Hi. Everybody's in my biz. There we go. Sorry, buddy. So I got a dart in Zeus right away, and he kind of hopped around. It popped out. Oop. But you can see he got enough. He's got his head down. He's kind of really sedate. There we go. Don't Caesar, beat it. Oh, leave him. Hey, look at that punk. Caesar is not helping. He's telling his buddy Zeus, don't go down. Like, he knows we're after him. I don't need him in there tattling and getting everybody excited, moving around. Sir, get out of there. Stand down, buddy. <laughs> Sarah, 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 wait. There we go. That was a good booga booga. He was like defending him. That was so cute. There goes his head. Can Sierra come in? The cavalry. We've got Zeus down now. He's looking good. Nice. We're basically going to move him right into the clinic and do the surgery indoors. Welcome to our clinic. We'll put an IV in him. We'll get him supported. We'll give him oxygen. 99.6 is his temperature. That's good. Nice and normal. Oh, we oh, might need a tube him. He's already kind of bloaty. Oh, dude, you're so bloated. We got to do this quick. I'm looking at him, and he's like, like, you just see it looks like his belly just getting bigger. I just need to flip him onto this side so I can de-bloat him. The pressure is going to make the lungs shrink up so the lungs can't get enough oxygen. And that pressure will shut the blood supply off. So you have no oxygen, you have no blood supply, and that animal's going to go into shock. Just getting all the gas out of his rumen right now. And the reason I have this in here is so he doesn't chew my tube off. I don't want to waste any time with this. I can feed this tube into his esophagus, right down into his stomach. Come on, buddy. Burp. Is he burping, or is that just gas sounds? Ooh. I trust smell you. Smell that. Oh, brutal. Yeah, stinky. You smell that? That's that's the smell of success there. He's burping. Poof. That is one smell of success. I know. It feels a little better. OK, let's get started. Now that we've got Zeus in a good position, we've got the bloat relieved, it's just time to get to the castration. And that's the prize right there. Get those out of the way. Easy peasy, testy squeezy, tie him off, get him out, and we'll get him right back into the pen with his buddies. Look at that. Cute. So the first thing you do, just remove the end of this scrotum right off of there. And then I'm going to pop these guys out. Oh, my. Now that I have them out, I can clamp them. I'm going to tie these off. There's one. All right, that one's done. What is that? So as I'm getting the second testicle out, there's something else trying to come out. What is that? I'm pushing it back in, but it still wants to come out. I'm not sure what that even is. So now I'm worried. There shouldn't be anything else coming out of there. Does he have a hernia? Is that a hernia? Oh, god, no. Oh, buddy. Uh, I think he's got a hernia. This has gone from easy peasy, testy squeezy to I'm like freaking out on the inside right now because a hernia is really serious. Rick. A piece of intestine is coming out where it shouldn't be, and it's likely to strangulate and then it will die, and then the animal could die. Like, it's really serious. OK, I'm going to finish castrating, and then try and figure out what that is. What I'm going to do right now is remove the other testicle, complete the job, and then I'm going to have to get the hernia back in there, which is tough when they're bloated, because more of the intestines can start coming out. The balls are removed. A lot of stuff trying to come out. That should not be there. It also feels like another ball. 
We just need to look at this more carefully, make sure it's intestine, and then get it right back in there. It looks like a ball. It looks like a ball. Is that even possible? Are you sure that's not a little piece of intestine? No, I'm not sure, because it can look like that. My stomach feels kind of It's tot. super tight, I know. Yeah. His oxygen is still at 98. Google three bald cow. Like, I've literally never heard of it. I don't know if that happens. Or Sean McKenna actually would know. Where's my phone? I need a lifeline to Sean immediately. If this is a three bald reindeer, this will definitely be a first for me. Dr. McKenna is a farm service guru. So I figured if anyone would know about a three bald bull before I've seen that, it would be Sean. He's going to think I'm kidding. I'm not. Oh, thank God. McKenna, you ever heard of a three bald cow? A what? Three bald cow. Three testicles. Yeah. No. Like you, got, you got three testicles? Well, I don't know. I, it keeps trying to pop out, but it's a bloated reindeer. And I'm, it looks like a ball, but I think it could be a bit of intestine, but it sure looks like a ball. Do you see that? Yeah, I do. It looks like a testicle. Are we sure? That's crazy. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. Do you see that? I think it's a test. OK, I'm going to carefully cut in there so I could always close that, right? Because it, yeah, just make a little neck in it. A little neck and see what comes out, and I could always put it back. But if it's intestine, I'm it's hunting you down. I'm hunting you down, buddy. How about the feel of it? It looks too meaty to be intestine. It feels meaty, and it's got a stalk. Exactly. If you cut into that tissue and it's a hernia, you've just cut into intestine. Cut into intestine is really dangerous. All the bacteria and everything, all those intestinal contents are going everywhere. It's a mess. <gasps> no. <gasps> what? No, 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 no. It keeps trying to pop out, but it's a bloated reindeer. And I'm, it looks like a ball, but I think it could be a bit of intestine, but it sure looks like a ball. If I cut into this and it turns out to be intestinal tissue, hopefully I don't nick the intestine itself because that would cause a massive infection. <gasps> no. <gasps> what? I don't know. No. I don't know what it is. Because I'm mom gasping, because I do that. Why do you do that? That's I don't so know. Annoying. It's dude, it's testicle. It's dude, it's not. testicle. Take it out. I'm taking it out. <laughs> This sucker's going, like, in the formalin, up on the trophy case. Holy crap, that's whack. It's definitely a third testicle. Testicular tissue has a certain look to it when you open it up. Unbelievable. And there's nothing else in the body that looks like that. It's 100% man gonad, so, you know, <laughs> we know that's what it is. Thank you so much. Good job. All right, bye. Almost done, buddy. Trophy testy. Cute. We need total family pictures with this. This is just like amazing. He had three. <laughs> three nuts. This is so rare. I mean, come on. Who even would believe that unless they saw it? I sort of feel like doing a lap with these things and be like, check this out. So, what you putting in the water, Sarah? <laughs> what the, I mean, <laughs> here in Portage, yeah. <laughs> we're a little different, yeah. I thought Dr. Oakley was full of it when she first told me that Zeus had three testicles, because I've never heard of such a thing. He really did. Aw, what's that one's name again? Luna. Luna. She's like, I want to come on the ride. Oh, look at come her. Come on. Come on, Luna. Come on, Luna. Oh. <laughs> Certainly one for the record books. Now he's got his reversal. Okay. Hey, good morning. How are you, special? Huh? He did great. I think he was on his feet two minutes after we gave him the reversals. There you go. Good job. Are you standing? It was an amazing success. I just can't believe that there were three testicles in one reindeer. You set me up. I swear, somehow you did this on purpose. It's 2020, man. That's how it goes. <laughs>
winter time at the reindeer farm is actually really great. They are arctic animals and this time of year is when you find reindeer typically at their healthiest and, and they love it. But one member of Denise's happy herd is having a rough season. So I've got this one that has some bow legs and all the other reindeer pick on him. Aww, and they don't let him play the reindeer game? No. <laughs> we named him Rudolph because he has some issues and he gets picked on. He's got some bow legs, but Michelle is going to see what's causing this. That's him right there. Aww. Doesn't he look sad? Oh, dude, you do look sad. He's only, you know, seven months old. He's so young and I don't want him uncomfortable and hurting. You oh, see it's it? the front legs, yeah. I can see it, yep. He was either born with or developed bow legs in the front. So his legs, instead of being nice and normal straight, they, they bow out right at what's called the carpus, which looks like a knee. And that's making it hard for him to move around. He's starting to show some signs of lameness. Are you certain it wasn't there when he was a baby? Or I'm not, not certain. sure. I didn't okay. notice it. Yeah, right. Rudolph's bow legs make it hard for him to escape from the rest of the herd. And that's just the start of his troubles. He's been pushed into a fence and he damaged the base of his antlers. Can't really grab his antlers. Just put the halter around yeah. his nose real quick. Can you see that puff on the right one? Yeah. And he's got an infection in his eye. Oh, what yeah, you've got a blue eye. What yeah. happened to you now? So he's really kind of pathetic. I feel bad for him, and we really just want to get him feeling better and see if he can get back out with the group. He's, he's a bit of a mess, isn't he? And no friends. And no friends on top of <laughs> Except it. Except for his mother. Well, that's good. At least mommy loves you. To get a closer look at Rudolph's many ailments, Michelle and Denise need to first separate him from the bullies in the pen. And there was oh, oh, hey, don't pick on him. Don't pick on him. Are they mean to you? Grab the the herd's treatment of Rudolph may look harsh, but it's instinctual behavior. The ones that are acting a bit different, that aren't moving as nice, you know, they can attract the attention of predators. George, George, back up. And so the group tends to exclude him a bit. Come on, baby. He's not halter broke. <laughs> oh, I see that. <laughs> Rudolph needs to be moved inside for his exam, but he's not used to being tethered. Oh, oh, watch. Papa doesn't get out. get out. Oh, oh, heads up, heads up. Oh. Hold on, baby. Okay. Sorry, my hand was twisted there. He's pulling Denise and I all over the place. OK, get shut that gate real quick. Can you come in or out? Because I got to shut it so they don't get out. Please come along. We can barely control them. OK, OK, oh, it's me. It's me. OK. Oh. Oof, are you OK? Yeah. Hold on, hold on. It's OK. It's OK. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. Heads up. Wild reindeer. Oh. Oof, are you OK? Yeah. Dr. Michelle Oakley is attempting to inspect. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. <laughs> Rudolph the reindeer's infected eye. Oh, my goodness, with the blue eye. Sometimes when they get a lot of, you know, ice and wind, they'll, they will end up with, like, a lot of trauma to the eye. And then they'll get a bluish hue to the surface of the cornea. He's got a little David Bowie going on. I mean, he's got this one blue eye and this little brown one. The surface of the cornea, which should be totally clear and smooth, has some inflammation or infection going on. And then those cells reflect the light, and it all looks blue. Right now, I'm trying to look to see if there's anything, like, in the chamber of the eye. We want to make sure that there's nothing stuck in there or it's not ulcerating. It doesn't look like there's much in there. I'm having a hard time seeing what's going on. So what I need to do is actually put some stain in there and see if there's been some injury to the surface of the eye. Ooh, creepy eye. I just put some fluorescein stain in there. And so that will stick to any kind of um, defect in the surface of the cornea, like if there's an ulcer or something like that. Let's flush all that away. Uh-oh, guess what? I see stain stuck where it shouldn't be. Oh, dear. Oh, baby. Darn it. Unfortunately, a bunch of the stain won't flush away, and it's stuck right in the middle of his cornea. So that tells me that there's actually a bit of an ulcer starting. A corneal ulcer is a sore usually caused by dryness, infection, or trauma. So as you can see, the stain rinsed away from everywhere except for that one big honking yeah. spot. Left untreated, it could continue to grow that can perforate into the eyeball and, and start a major infection. He can actually lose his eye. It's at least into the first couple layers. To stop the ulcer from spreading further, Michelle will inject antibiotics straight into his eyelid. All right. 
So I'm injecting penicillin actually into the tissues under his okay. eye. And so you can see that's a bubble of penicillin and that's gonna leak out over the next two or three days. And okay, okay, we can let him up actually. And that seems to work wonders. It may take up to two weeks for Rudolph's eye to heal completely. In the meantime, to defend himself in the pen, his antlers need attention. The other issue is this antler. Yeah, he kept getting stuck in the fence. Oh, so that's why we cut okay. the antlers, because mm -hmm. he would reach through and then couldn't get out. <laughs> oh, OK. When he was stuck, he may have damaged the base of his antler. And when you get a crack in an antler that's growing, bacteria can get in there, and then it gets an infection. Other oh, reindeer owners have found when yeah. there's pus leaking really at the the base. Really below the base. Mm -hmm. It has gone to the brain. Right. That's certainly a concern. If they do have an infection in the antler, even if it starts here, it can track down. That infection can actually travel down the pedicle and get, you know, in the skull, get actually right into the brain. Infection in the brain would likely spell death for the yelling reindeer. One by one, we're getting you fixed right up. Look at you, sad baby. Michelle flushes the area and injects powerful antibiotics into his wound. This is like pus that's matted around here. And so just trying to get it all out of the way to make sure there's no like crack down low or anything like mm. that. Sorry, love. Push that a bit. OK, 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 hey, hey, are you OK? Nope. Me <laughs> <laughs> So Rudolph um, gets kicked on, but he is pretty strong. <laughs> he is way stronger than he seems, you know? Now that Rudolph's eye and antler have been treated, Michelle has one more problem to tackle, those bow legs. So first thing I want to do is just feel his legs, making sure that it moves normally, that it can bend normally, and sometimes even lower in the joint is contracted. It'll cause the knees to bow out. So no nope. swelling in the joint at all. Really? Nothing obvious that I could feel, you know what I mean? There are no clear explanations for Rudolph's deformity. So Michelle turns to a trusted diagnostic tool. Why don't we go ahead and get the x-rays done? Okay. You are so good. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Bent. You can even see the bow yeah. in the radius and the ulna there that are kind of like, whoosh, you know, like out of the side. And they would normally side. be straight, right? Yeah, so they would normally be straight. So it's actually the bone that's bent. It can see there's a deformity in the bone. It's basically a curved shape, and that's what's causing his whole legs to, to bow out. We'll never know what caused it. It could have been something that happened during gestation. It could have been something that happened soon after when he was trying to walk. Uh, in any case, there's not a whole lot we can do for it at this point. That looks funny right there. That looks like almost like a little chip or something. Oh. A closer look reveals more bad news. You can see how things are just not lined up properly. Yeah. So unfortunately, it does look like he's getting bits of yucky bone or cartilage that are jumping out. We're starting to see some pretty significant arthritis. He's got some defects in his cartilage. And he's a young animal, so he can't be with this group of youngsters that want to fight and knock him around that he's trying to run from. Kind of less movement would be would be better for him right now, but how long can you do that? I think we're going to try to move him and his mom in with the grandmas. You know, he won't have to walk as far for food. Oh, they also yeah. have arthritis. <laughs> right. <Aww. laughs> okay, that sounds like a great plan. The old granny reindeer also have arthritis, and you know, he just wants to be with other reindeer. But it'll be nice to put them in a group in the old granny pen, and they can all kind of hang out together. If it becomes more progressive and more of a problem, he can have like daily meloxicam. So, okay, so we could can, give it to all of like, the grandmas too. You could be doing that. <laughs> Dr. Oakley gave us some suggestions that we can maybe offer him to try to get through that arthritis and see if we can at least let him get, you know, a little more grown up and, and see how he does. Okay, we are done picking on you. I'm so sorry you get picked mm. on all the time, you poor baby. All right. Oh, come on, buddy. Rudolph's had a really tough go of it, but I love working with these underdogs, these animals that seem like there's no hope. Look, there's mommy. And then with just, you know, a little bit of extra attention, a little bit of extra love and effort, we can get them to pull through and they're right back on their happy way. I really think he can come around and still lead a happy, healthy life. Oh my goodness. Oh, whoo. <laughs> yeah. Aw. Trots off with his little yeah. legs. He's happy to go. On the road again. Like a 
chauffeur for you. I just drive you everywhere. I know. I'm driving Miss Daisy. Today, we're going back to the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center because we need to check out a little reindeer named Fern. She's the newest member of the reindeer herd. She's a couple weeks old. Let's go check Fern. Initially, she seemed great, but the last couple days, they've noticed where Fern is going up to other reindeer in the pen and looking like she needs to nurse. And she also keeps approaching other males who are then turning and giving her a couple little kicks, which is not good. And today, she's been kind of buttoning her mom, trying to get her to get up to feed her, and her mom just walks away. I don't know how much your mom cares. I know. I was like, whatever. All right, you want me in there, too, or no? No pressure. We're very concerned now that she maybe hasn't been getting enough to eat. Like, is her mom caring for her properly or not? Because typically, this mom has been very good with previous calves. So we're going to have to go in and check her out. Got her. Got her. Mom doesn't care at all. That's a really Little bad sign. baby. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Oh, my goodness. As I'm looking at her, I can see, like, very little fight. Oh, she's dehydrated. Let me feel your belly. She's way too flat. And she's a bit dehydrated. I can tell even just tenting her skin. Her skin doesn't go back that easily. Her, her mouth is tacky. Do you see how, like, that yeah. is, like, really, like, stringy? Yeah. I mean, clearly, if she's dehydrated, she hasn't eaten for a while. So she's going to be low sugar. And she also could be getting septic and have some infection right now. I think we need to just, just pull, pull her. her. Yeah. Or have you got a pen already ready for uh, her? We have a pen available. OK. We can get it set up. Oh, yeah, she's totally she dumpy. To yeah. It's actually not ideal to pull a two-week-old calf from the mom. I'm taking your job. Do you want to get in with us? It's possible, though, if we try to put her back, that the mom will totally reject her. But now I feel like we just can't wait anymore. If we don't pull her right now, I think she could die. We got to go. Right. Oh, love. You're having tough days, you little lover. Fern's looking pretty sad. Like, she's, she's really not fighting us much. She's very dehydrated. I don't know what else is wrong, but we need to give her some emergency care quickly. Hi, baby. You've got crusty eyes. Yes, you do. We don't like that. Ooh. Got like a, a got a little bruise. It looks like at the base of her eye. If you, can yeah, you see that? Like... She got smacked pretty yeah. hard by that steer. Yeah. Fern has gotten herself up to a few males and really got a couple serious hits. And sometimes, if a calf starts to act off a bit, the mom will just reject it at that point. Well, she's got kind of a bulbous head, which sometimes means they're premature. But she hasn't been acting premature. Like she got colostrum right away, right, and everything. But she's got a really good suckle. Her lungs sound raspy. Oh, love. Whatever the cause is, now what we need to do is quickly stabilize Fern. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to start an IV, give her a bunch of antibiotics, and, and just try to turn her around quickly. Ah. can try a little honey on her gums. Mmm, I want some too. Ooh, organic raw, are you kidding me? The good stuff. Only the best. A little bit of honey on yeah, your gummy. Oh, do you want a little bit of honey on your gummy? Nope. Do you want to lick my finger? Ooh. A little bit of sugar will kind of perk her up a bit. She hasn't been nursing as much as she needs to, so she's probably a little low glucose. So honey on the gums will help that. So I would suspect she's maybe didn't get as much colostrum as we thought or hope, like she probably got a little. In any case, I think she's getting like a whole septic infection. I mean, look at her. Thank you. Yeah, I know. Her. <laughs> was, yeah. That's not how a calf should act. No. I'll give her a couple more injections, then we can move her over to her new digs. Fern in this situation is definitely critical. Don't look. There you go, baby. Let that do its magic. I'm glad that we're able to get the fluids going on her. We've got the antibiotics in her. Um, it's really just going to be a time will tell situation okay. where they're going to have to be monitoring her 24 7. All right. All the boosts that you need to get a good start, a better good start. It's OK. I really think that with a lot of intensive care and, you know, everyone doing everything they can for her, that we'll turn her around. OK, come on, then. But it certainly isn't a given, especially when a young animal like this has so much going against them. You little lover. Oh, love. I'm going to do a trial run here. The countdown to Christmas is on. <laughs> Oh, it caught me. 
Today, Michelle is making sure the reindeer of Palmer, Alaska are in tip-top shape before they go to a special annual charity event, the running of the reindeer. Go ahead and send her. Here comes Raspberry. Go ahead, Raspberry. Before we go, Dr. Oakley is going to help us with a pre-race health check, make sure all our athletes are up to top health condition. Let's have a listen. The running of the reindeer is a, a fun part of the Rendezvous Festival in Anchorage. That sounds fabulous. It's basically people running down the streets of Anchorage through lots of snow as reindeer chase them. All right, she looks great. Woo! Look at her little buck. Here comes another one. Today's goal is to pick out 21 reindeer to run the three block mad dash alongside hundreds of human competitors. This is Pidge. Perfect. We're gonna run the most tame reindeer, the ones that are very used to traveling. Who's the best around people and who look in really good shape and ready to run? Her feet look fabulous. Great, she looks good. Come on, Malu. Pretty good. Go ahead and let her go. Woo! Beautiful color and teeth. Uh, she still sounds pretty raspy. I'd have her sit the bench on this one. It's not like this race is physically strenuous for them in any way. They're used to people and they're happy to run but it is important that they're in really good shape. You get the day off, missus. So we're gonna pull out anybody that doesn't look like they're in their top physical form to head to the race. Lungs sound good. Reindeer breath smells good. Okay, Peppa looks great. Is this gonna be her first race? This will be her first race. Mine too. So today I'm not only doing the health checks for these guys, I'm also gonna be running against them in the race. That's quite the rack. I yeah. Don't think I want that <laughs> Me. Yeah. A little bit of a conflict of interest, but we want to make sure we all do well today. <laughs> He'd be a good one for the race. I'd beat this one. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got our 21 runners, some rookies, a lot of veterans. So now we just need to load them up in the trailer and head down to the race. At the race site, the crowd's fired up, and the stars of the day are just about ready to roll. Go ahead and start unloading them. Doing the last check because everybody gets out of the trailer, but they look great. What's this one's name? Raspberry. <laughs> okay, everybody looks ready to go. I'll see you at the other end. <laughs> okay, we'll see you Good later. Good luck. <laughs> Besides being a lot of fun and a little bit crazy, the running of the reindeer raises a ton of money, over $100,000 for kids in need. I've been wanting to do this for years, so finally get to do it. We get a bit of an advantage. We get to leave about 10 seconds early, but I think actually beating them to the other end is going to be an act of futility. All right. You all count it down with me. Here we go. Ah! Five, four, three, two, two one. Run! Dr. Michelle Oakley is in the middle of a reindeer race in Anchorage, Alaska. She's attempting to outrun the reindeer alongside hundreds of human competitors in this annual charity event. Basically, the reindeer are running because they want to get back to the rest of the group. You know, they're not running out of fear. They're not running out of panic. They're just like, oh, there's the group. Let's go catch up to them. So it's kind of fun to run with them and see if you can beat them. And not too many people can. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> This morning, the reindeer work continues at the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center. Well, it's perfect weather for reindeer work. Yeah. Neville, a two-year-old reindeer, isn't running at full steam. Hi, gang. So, who's this one? Uh, this is Neville. Neville, right? He's our steer. Neville currently has his old antlers from last year still on top of his head while he is growing his new antlers underneath. So last year, he would have gone through an antler cycle, and they this is the first antler cycle. This is the first antler cycle since he's been since castrated. He's been castrated. Okay. As the antler basically dies each year, it turns into solid, hard bone. And then it gets, it just through hormone cycles, it should just naturally come off after a period of months. That didn't happen in this guy, and it's still really well attached. So was he castrated as a baby or an adult? He or? was castrated at a year old. Because he's a steer, that means he has no testicles, so that means he's got no major hormones circulating to kind of get that antler cycle going. Yeah. Usually reindeer steers do just fine being castrated, you know, without the hormones. But every now and then, I think, you know, you will get something weird like this. 
that old antler is sticking out like that, sometimes they'll bump and break it, and that can be a, a big issue. I'm kind of worried that because they're still so solid in there, it could either damage the base of the pedicle that's growing, or it could even crack the skull, so. Ooh. Dude, why aren't you losing your antler? Today's goal, get the protrusion off Neville's skull so he can grow a proper rack like his penmates. Hello, Neville. How's it going? Is that your brother? Are you the Neville brothers? Neville is kind of looking over Chuckles. Chuckles is a big, strong bull, and he gets a ridiculously impressive oh. rack. I love how these feel. Oh, those are so warm. So warm. warm. I know, so nice. I feel kind of bad that he's going to have to look at that all season, but they're buddies. He'll get over it. I'm going to help you with that odd thing you got going there. Come on, Chuck. OK, let me get some gloves on, and we'll have a feel. What we're going to do is actually remove the old antler, at least as much of it as we can get at today. A serrated wire will quickly get the job done. The restraint is going to be really important here because it, it won't take long, but I don't want him to poke somebody in the eye with that. Shh. I know, bud. You're going to hate it. No, this is too dangerous with Brittany's head there. All right, here, let me try something. OK, let's try that. Good boy. It's all right, bud. It's OK. Almost. Neville feels no pain as wire cuts through dead bone. Come on, bud. It's OK. It's all right. Oh my Good God. boy. Look how handsome you are now that you got that weird antler cut off. To get his antler cycle back on track, Neville's hormones need regulating. I'm going to be now cleaning off the back of his ear and putting a little hormone implant in there. You're not going to like this. OK, are you guys ready? Now it's going to allow his antler to, to slowly continue to grow, but it's also going to eventually wear off and shut that whole cycle down so that then he'll shed his antlers earlier than normal. You should be on the road to, to antler correction. You're just going to have antler envy. No one's going to compare to the lovely rack that Chuckles has. Right. Michelle's work today isn't done. This reindeer has head to toe problems. Is there anything you wanted to do about the hair on the leg. Like, he licks his legs a lot. Oh, OK. One other thing that they've noticed with Neville is that all four of his legs, most of the hair has been like what's called barbered or almost chewed down. It's it's very short and even missing in some spots. So I don't know if that's just from his obsessive licking. Yeah, we want to do a scrape. I've seen that a lot in other animals, and it often has to do with a mite infection. Mites dwell just beneath the surface of the skin. Michelle uses a dulled razor blade to get to where they hide. You can see I'm not cutting them, but I am like taking that top layer of skin. I'm trying to get at the, the follicles, because that's where the mites like to hang. Sometimes you do your scrape, and you don't find anything. It can be nutritional. It can even just be behavioral. Sometimes from stress, they'll lick and lick and lick, which is one of the hardest things to, to try and diagnose. And when I get back to well, the team bonding we're doing right now, this uh, is great. I'm really actually hoping we find mites, because I know what to do with that, and we can get them feeling better quick. Now it's on to the infirmary to see if it's a slam dunk diagnosis. I'm so excited. Don't run with slides in your hand. Cooties! Cooties coming, I hope. Dr. Oakley suspects Neville the reindeer may be infested with mites. Oh, yeah, baby. I got the mother load, the mite mother load. So we found mites. I love it especially because now I know what I can do to help them. Look at that. Ooh. Awesome. And so creepy. They are chewing and kind of eating the skin tissue, so they definitely cause the animal to be quite itchy. Oh, this is like, dude's got cooties. Oh, man. That's so cool. <gasps> don't, don't itch me. They are contagious. They can spread to other animals on the property. You know, there's two animals in there. In this pen in particular, there's Chuckles and Neville. So we'll have to treat them both. I love when I know what it is, and I know how to treat it. That treatment could go beyond reindeer. Oh my gosh, Arnold. Arnold the moose may be the next victim. You don't have cooties too, do you? He's barbering his chewing at his feet too. That's not good. Good news is, he's got mites. And I mean, he's loaded. It's gnarly. Wow. They're swimming. 
And the bad news is they both have to be treated, and I see that Arnold is missing hair around well, his feet, too. Should we treat him, so, too, just since they're all in the same neighborhood? The big issue is that some of the same folks that are working with the moose are going over and working with the larger pen of reindeer. You know, both pens of reindeer are sharing halters and lead ropes. What it means is they can transfer disease or they can transfer like these mites. So the thing is, is these mites can get carried on our clothing. They can get carried. They can come in on like straw and hay. Oh, gnarly. So what we're going to need to do is start instituting some really good biosecurity to try and keep this mite situation in one pen and get rid of it once and for all. You need to like probably be changing cover biosecure. Michelle shows the AWCC staff how to treat their animals with medicated injections. And this stuff stings. You do have to restrain them. Oh boy. This treatment is not one and done. Mites can be a little stubborn. They can be hard to get rid of. Good boy. No, that's not a good boy. Even if I kill the mites that are there right now, they will have laid eggs. OK, we're good. Awesome. Oh. He was a good boy. Well, now Your turn. Ball. We might have to do multiple treatments to try and, you know, sort of totally get rid of the life cycle. Good boy. Oh, what a good boy. He did better than Chuck. He was. He's like the star patient. Neville should be parasite-free within the next couple weeks. So you don't have kids. You haven't dealt with lice. I was going to say, I've never had lice. <laughs> Try three girls with long hair. Yikes. <laughs> Back in Palmer, Michelle has one more follow-up with Rudolph the reindeer, whose deformed legs made him an easy target for the bullies in the herd. Hi, how are you? Since I was here last time, they've transitioned him back to staying with the rest of the herd. He's much happier with the big group, and he's doing well with it. I mean, he's still bow-legged, no surprise there. Yeah. We knew that was kind of a lifelong thing, but he's getting around way better, mm -hmm. so. He's keeping up with the other reindeer and playing with them. Yay. And running. Rudolph's never going to lead Santa's sleigh, but he's around to help everybody else get ready for the big day, and he's definitely having a great life mixed in with the herd. So that's all we really wanted. Hooray for Rudolph. Hooray for Rudolph. And at the AWCC, a promising new star is blossoming. OK, let's go check Fern. Oh, look Ooh. at the beautiful baby. Hi, Bernie. Bernie. So things are looking up for Fern. We're going to come visit with you guys. You're looking kind of friendly, but we're going to go real slow. She had a really tough go for the first couple weeks. Come on over here, Fern. She was born to an experienced mom who'd taken good care of other calves. But suddenly, we started noticing she was looking like she was hungry all the time. She was laying down by herself. I don't know how much her mom cares. I know. I was like, whatever. When we went in to get her, you know, we could tell she was very dehydrated, really malnutrition. So we had to put her on IV fluids, give her glucose, give her electrolytes. Like, we had to really do a lot to save her. It's OK. Here we go. And she's come around amazingly well. Look at you. You only weighed like 15 pounds, and now you're like a big, fat chunker. The staff here is doing a great job taking over as Fern's mom. <laughs> Once Fern gets bigger, she will go back in with the reindeer herd. Oh! <laughs> we just need to kind of get her through this baby phase. See if you can run around. I want to see how she's moving. She go, Fern. Me? Come go on, look, Fern. Come on, Fern. Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. Go see her. But she's probably almost tripled her weight in just like four or five weeks. So it's incredible to see how much progress she's made. She's got the zoomies. <laughs> wow. Zoomies. Zoomies. She's just thriving and growing like a weed Woo. now. She's growing like a fern. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, baby. 